love is struggling with their mental health, they don't have to struggle alone. Text or call 988 to get resources and support from trained crisis counselors. Hope has a new number. Text or call 988. He was doing good everywhere he went. Yes, we have. We have come again. Oh, yeah. We have come again. Oh, Lord. Lord, we have come again. Oh, Lord, we have come again. Oh, we have come again. My Lord, we've come again. We've come again. Oh, we have come again. My Lord, we've come again. Lord, we have come again. Holy Ghost, we have come again. Hallelujah. 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 Impact. I said when I say impact, you say up to higher height. Then when I say up to higher height, you say impact. Impact. Some people had it, and so they raised their hand. You are going up higher. Impact! Up to higher height! Up to higher height! And you go higher and higher in Jesus' name. If there is somebody sitting next to you, tell the person, I am going higher. No, tell the person, let the person hear, I am going higher. And the Lord will take you higher in Jesus' name. We'll take our program sheets and take the song, Arise, O Youth of God. Arise, O Youth of God. Have done lesser things. Give heart and soul and mind and strength to serve the King of Kings. Arise, O youth of God, his kingdom tarries long. Bring in the day of joy and peace, and end the night of wrong. Arise, O youth of God, the church for you that wait. Her strength shall make your spirit strong. Her service make you great. Lift high the cross of Christ. Tread where his feet have trod. Be loyal to the king of kings. March on, O youth of God. Arise, arise, the master calls for thee. Arise, arise, O youth of God. March on to the victory.
new Smoke and Triple Stack at Firehouse Subs is stacked with honey ham, smoked turkey, and slow smoked beef brisket. And a portion of every purchase helps provide life saving equipment to first responders only at Firehouse Subs. Tap the banner now to start your order. Amen. Shall please humbly take our seats. We we'll go straight into our seminars. We are going straight into our seminars. So seminar teachers, the workshop, please take your places. So we have the DLSO, the junior high, how to change your world. Senior high possessing the power to change your world. So seminar teachers, the arrangement has already been made, so move, make sure that all the places are covered. The vocational and next students who are direct opposite where I stand, they are taking a change youth in a changing world. At the DLCF campus, members and staff are taking capacity building for a global change. The students are taking the making of change agents. And then the YPF, and then the young adults are taking becoming a world changer. Teachers, please, you have 30 minutes. Please, teachers, you have exactly 30 minutes. You can begin, God bless you.
attains highs or attain the higher highs in his life. God's plan of pep of success for every youth is all encompassing. But some youths limit their success to academic excellence alone. Academic success is just a bridge to higher, high, higher life in life. Attaining higher height is a gem that captures the aspiration of everybody. Everybody wants to succeed in life. But we will need the help of God to be able to achieve this kind of life as you desire. That's why the Lord is saying, for I know the thought that I think toward you. See us the Lord, the thought of peace and not of evil, to give you what? An expected end. By believing and appropriating the promises of God on sources, coupled with diligence and hard work, you can achieve higher highs in life. Hallelujah. We are looking at our study under some three subtitles. Point number one, the pathway and possibilities for higher heights in life. If you have your notebook there, you, I will want you to write these points. The pathway and possibilities for higher heights in life. Point number two, you will look at the promise and provisions for higher heights in life. The promise and provisions for higher heights in life. Then point number three, the partakers of God's promise for higher heights in life. The people that can take part in the blessings of God. Let's come to point number one. What did I say was point number one? The pathway and possibilities for higher heights in life. life. Let's, read Let's read from Proverbs. From Proverbs. 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 I'm, reading I'm reading from 13, 13, 13, 13, 13 and verse 4. 4, 4, 4, 4. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13 and you will read from verse 4. And here we look at the pathway, the pathway and the possibilities that God has given to us as his children. Proverbs 13, and we are reading from verse 4. And verse 4 says, The soul of the sluggard desired and has nothing, but he that opened wide his lips Sorry, the soul of the sluggard desired and had nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Praise the Lord. The one who is hardworking, the one who will pay the price by doing his own part, the Bible says that person shall be made what? Fat. Everybody wants to be fat in life. Is that not so? You want to achieve. You want to succeed in life. There is a price you have to pay. There is a cost that you must bear. That is how you'll be able to make success in life. We also read from Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And we will read from verse 15. You have your Bible with me. Ephesians chapter 5. As we read from verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectively. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. God does not want us to walk as fools, people who don't have wisdom, who don't have any plan, who don't have any aspiration or desire that this is what I want to achieve, you must have a desire, you must have a goal, and you must have a plan. It is when you have the plan 
and you work towards the plan, and God also helping you on the other side, hard work and God will give you the success you desire. Hallelujah. So for you to achieve higher heights in life, what do you have to do? I'm going to give you some points. And these, you have to write them down. Every day you remind yourself, you read them over and make sure you are doing them, you are applying them in your life. Success will be yours. Amen. So what do you do to achieve higher heights? Number one, desire higher heights as you desire food and water. Have you eaten today? I'm sure you have eaten. Why? Because you see it as something important. It's the same thing. That you should also desire what? Higher heights, sources, achievement, wanting to go higher. It should be your desire. Without desire, there will be no aspirations. There will be no determination to attempt anything worthwhile, something profitable. So number one, the pathway to higher life is that you must have what? A desire. Number two, decide to attain higher heights. Your decision determines your actions. If you know I want to achieve, you will make time available for what is important to you. That's your decision. You must decide to attain higher highs. Let your desires propel you to a meaningful decision that will put your feet on the pathway of success. Hallelujah. Number two, number three, sorry. Be diligent to attain higher height because the diligent will always succeed and rule. Those who are hardworking, industrious, diligent, those people, they will rule. That's why you must be diligent. Lazy people are not going to achieve. Lazy people will always be down and low. Lazy people will always be poor, but those who are hardworking. And that's why you shouldn't be a lazy student. Wake up early, work hard, study, and God will help you to achieve success in Jesus' name. Number four, be disciplined to be at the peak. Success goes with what? Discipline. There are things you have to avoid as a youth, as a young boy, and as a young girl. When the people of the world are watching football and they are giving their time to television, because you are disciplined, because you want to achieve, you will avoid those things so that you can concentrate on what is important. That is discipline. Work hard to dot every I and do what? And cross every T. You know the spider? They are even able to work at the king's palace because of hard work. If you will also work hard and you have an aspiration, I want to achieve, I want to succeed, you will surely succeed in Jesus' name. Point um, number five, be determined. That means be resolved to walk through in the path of attaining higher heights. Do not let obstacles stand your way. Make them your ladder and stepping stones to the platform of success. Of course, obstacles will come. No one achieves success. No one succeeds in life without confronting, facing, coming across what? Obstacles. But you must have the mind that whatever obstacles come my way, it's not going to hinder me, like the ant. They see obstacles in front of them. They don't complain. What do they do? They just walk around. And then they continue their journey. Exactly. That is what you must do. Overcome all the obstacles by determination that you walk on that path. You achieve. Number six, be discreet in the use of your time. That's why we always advise you have a timetable. Do you have a timetable? Some of you don't have timetable. It's a timetable that will guide you and help you to know what to study at what time. Personal timetable and the discipline to follow it is one of the things you must do as a youth. 
as a young brother, as a young sister, as a boy or a girl, to achieve success in your life. You must have good judgment and sensible approach toward issues of life. What you do or what you fail to do may either enhance or hinder your dream of success and achievement. You will do something. I see you doing something. And as you do that little thing, once at a time, God will help you to achieve and make success in Jesus' name. Then the next point, depend on God. What can you achieve without God? Everything in life. You, you know, you, you can't make it alone by yourself. You will need the help of God. Sometimes some of the things are above you. Human knowledge, human idea cannot help you to overcome. As a student in the junior high, a boy or a girl, depend on God as you pray and as you're asking for the help of God because God is the author of what? Promotion. He's the one that gives achievement and is the one that gives what? Success. If you depend on God, I tell you, success will be yours in Jesus' name. Point number two. Are you following? Point number two. The promises and provisions for higher heights in life. He has promised that you'll be the head and you'll not be what? The tail. You'll be above only. You'll make success because that is what God desires for all his children. So maybe you are thinking, will I succeed in life? Yes, you will succeed. I said you will succeed because God has promised you that. Let's also read from Psalm 1. Open your Bible, Psalm 1. You read from verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3. Psalm 1. As I read from verse 1, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. What will he do then? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. If you do that, what will be the result? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruits in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You will prosper in Jesus' name because that is what God has promised. God has made provisions for promotion of his children. His delight for us is that we shall prosper in whatever we do and to have sources. Not just sources, but what kind of sources? A good sources. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good sources. That's what Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 6. When you are confronted with any challenge, any difficulty, and it looks like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Why don't you go to God? Why don't you pray and say, God help me? Because he has promised that he will give you divine presence and what? Assistance in your life. So, God has promised you his help. And he will help you. I said he will help you. Number two, sound and retentive memory. That's the promise of God. Let's read from Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 7. Open your Bible with me. Are you there? Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 7. God has promised. Maybe you are saying, oh, my mind, my memory is not good. And your parents are saying, you, you will not succeed. No, God has not promised that. He said he will help you to remember all that you learn. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 7. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. You are not wicked, so you will not rot. But God will help you so that your memory always 
with the mathematics, and with the science, and with the uh, English, or any other subject, with the help of God, you always remember what you study. Praise the Lord. I remember an exam I took. You know, I was busy here and there doing God's work. And then getting to the last days, then I picked the book. And then I prayed and said, God, it's because of your work. That is why I've not had enough time in these last days. Of course, I had studied earlier to revise again. Oh, God, help me. I opened the book. I went through some of the topics. Lo and behold, as I went to the exam hall, most exactly the pages I went through in the last days, they came. You see how God helps his people? You see how God has been promoting his people? And then God will also help you, not only to lead you to what you study, but also he will help you to remember what you study. Hallelujah. What are the promises of God? Number three, being the head and not the tail. We have read it from Deuteronomy 28, 13. It says, I will make you the head and not what? I will make you the head and not what? The tail. That's the promise of God. So if you are failing, it's not the will of God. Go to God and pray and say, God, your promise says, I will be the head and not the tail. You lack wisdom? You lack understanding in mathematics? You lack wisdom? You lack knowledge and understanding in the science? You lack wisdom? English is troubling you? Go to God. God, give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me understanding. And the Bible says God will give you without what? Restraining. He will help you and give you all the wisdom you need. I see somebody having wisdom. You didn't say amen to that. I see somebody having the understanding of God in his life even after this impact in Jesus' name. God has promised understanding and wisdom. Number six, God has promised provision to meet all your academic needs. Have you not read from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19? And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Anything you need, God will provide. All your needs, academic needs, spiritual needs, physical needs, family needs, as you depend on God and you go to God and say, God, you have promised that you will provide my need. I come. I need school fees. Oh, God, provide. Where it will come from, it will surprise you. The promise of God for you, divine succor and favor with all men. Jesus Christ was likewise tempted in Hebrews 2, 18. Therefore, he's able to help those who are what? Tempted. He's able to succor. He's able to help. He's able to support all those who need the help of God. And you give a favor. He'll give you, of course, let's read from Psalm 5. Purdue University Global. World-class education. Online, on your schedule, within your budget, within your grasp. Take your work experience and turn it into credit. The future is yours. Go get it with Purdue University Global. Wayday! Get up to 80% off with Wayfair's biggest sale of the year. Get veg. Some five, as I read from verse 12. Verse 12 says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous, he will bless you. With favor will thou compass him with, as with a shield. Favor will surround you. Favor will encircle and envelop you. Favor will be following you everywhere you go. That is a promise. For the Lord will bless the righteous with favor. He will also compass you with favor as what? Shield. That is a promise of God. I don't know what you need in your life, but I know a God that can help you. Because he has helped me, he has helped a lot of brothers and sisters I know, young people like you, God brought them out from their difficulties, and now some of them, they are big men and big women. The time has come for you also to achieve. 
and you will achieve even after this impact in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look at point number three. And in point number three, the partakers of God's promise for higher heights in life. Now that God has promised us that he will bless us, and you know God is not a man, that he will lie. Has he said it? Will he not make it good? Has he promised? And will he not do it? He will do it. How then do you partake? Who are the people that can partake? What do you do to partake of the promises and the provisions that God has made for his children, the partakers of God's promises for higher heights in life? Let's read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. As I read from verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet, not I, but the grace of God, which was upon me. So you need grace in your life. This is Paul the Apostle. Apostle, he said, I did much for God, but it's not myself, because I depended on the help of God, I depended on the grace of God, I depended on God's Hallelujah. The Lord has been good to us. And I want to tell you that before you leave here, you will not be at the same level again in Jesus' name. Your blessing will locate you wherever you are this morning in Jesus' name. And I want you to build that expectation and the Lord will fulfill it in Jesus' name. The Lord is taking us to higher heights and today is the day if you are here I want to congratulate you for coming hallelujah but I want you to understand one thing that you won't come and live the same expect great things from God and he will fulfill it for you in Jesus name those of us who are watching online I want to tell you also that the Lord will locate you where you are in Jesus' name. Share the link with as many people as you can. Call as many people as you can and tell them to connect as well because the Lord is doing great things here in Jesus' name. So we have looked at our seminars this morning and the Lord has spoken through the seminar teachers I know you have been greatly blessed. We are going to have opportunity for you so that if you have any questions regarding the study we have just had, you would come out and ask your questions. We have a strong panel that is going to take care of all your questions and elaborate further on the things that you have learned and give you more insight and prepare your heart for all these great things in Jesus' name. Yes. So one thing we all know and keep saying that is that we are in a competitive world and we have different forms of competitions, some of them very healthy competition, others also unhealthy competition. We want to look at the form of competition that is good for us and that will help us fulfill God's purpose for our lives and help take us to a higher height. We are blessed, we are privileged to have one of our professors, to have one of our accomplished brethren who is also one of our coordinators. 
talk to us on this very important topic. Hallelujah. He is an associate professor of project management and development evaluation at the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, Gimpa Business School. He is also the director of Gimpa Training and Consulting. Professor Amwate is a recipient of over two million grant award for the establishment of Development Impact West Africa Project, DIWA, an initiative that builds capacity of researchers and governments for evidence-informed policy making in West African sub-region. Professor Mwate holds a bachelor's degree in civil engineering, a master's degree in infrastructure planning, an MBA in finance and international management, and a PhD in development economics. He has consulted for several local and international development agencies, including the World Bank, African Capacity Building Foundation, ECOWAS Commission, AU Commission, and a lot more. He led the development of policies and leadership capacity building for governments, parliaments, and regional and global organizations. In 2021, Professor Amwate successfully led the implementation of an African Union flagship training and mentorship initiative for the top five union youth innovators on de democratic governance in Africa. Professor Amwate is the associate coordinator for Deeper Life Campus Fellowship at the University of Ghana with a resounding applause. Help me welcome Professor Charles Amwate to take us through the period of excellentia. I think you can do better than what you are doing. You can do better than what you are doing. Thank you very much. In part, in part, by the grace of God, we are going higher and higher in Jesus' name. I want us to be on our feet as we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity we have as young people who have been called and who have been destined for greatness. We are praying that as we go through this short, short session, you will inspire us. And every one of us will be all that you created us to be in Jesus' name. We are going upward, we are going higher, and we will fulfill your calling upon our lives in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you are going to help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we please be seated? I would like to thank the general superintendent and the convener of Impact Academy for this great opportunity to stand before our wonderful young men and women to talk about this very important topic. Be your own competition. Brothers and sisters, we are in a world of competition. And there is always the desire to perform better than others. We want to look at a new way we can compete, constructive and more impactful. So I will start by looking at what is competition? What does it mean to be your own competition? 
what we call self-competition. And I would like to touch briefly on the road to a healthy self-competition. And after that, I'm going to share with you Bow too big. What? The journey to becoming a University of Phoenix student is easier than you might think. There's no application fee, no SAT or GMAT required, and we'll locate your prior college transcripts at no additional cost. Apply for free at phoenix.edu. How we can develop a growth mindset to be winners in every endeavor. What is competition? Competition is the activity or condition of striving to gain or win something by defeating, establishing superiority over others. In this world of competition, others define their success through the failure of other people. And so in the class, somebody wants to be the first. And the only way you can be the first is when others perform less or below your own level of success. And so our success is defined by the failures or the inadequacies of other people. And because of that, we now find ourselves in a world where people will do everything to pull others down so they can be on top. Because the only way they can validate themselves and consider themselves as having been successful is to witness this failure of other people. The good news is that there is enough room upstairs for every one of us who want to achieve greatness. We can all succeed, and our success must not be defined by the failures of other people. And so I'm introducing you to a new emerging concept of competition what we call self-competition. Now, I'm, I'm referring here to a competition that is about chasing your own unrealized potential. So what we are saying here is that it is you versus you and not you versus others. We are setting new standards new definition for competition. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, Paul said that they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. We don't have to compete with others. We need to set new standards come up with our own game and compete with ourselves to be everything that God created us to be. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, Paul said, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What Paul is saying is that I know God's calling upon my life. I know the standard God has set for me. It's a high calling of God. And the reference point is Jesus Christ. 
So Paul says that the mark I'm pursuing, the success I am pursuing, is not a standard set by any man. It is a mark for the price of the high calling of God. And the reference point is Jesus Christ. And that's why Paul says that I may know him. Our mark, our reference for success must be defined by our Lord Jesus Christ and his expectations for our lives. Someone said that the starting point of successful achievement is to know yourself. Because the competition around who you become, whether you realize God's purpose for your life, is to know yourself, know who you are, know what God created you to be, and you pursue that vision. What is the road to a healthy self-competition? We are going to embark on a journey to greatness, a journey to self-competition, where we are not looking forward to outperforming other people. We have a race that is set before us by God himself. And our measure of success is not defined by the failures of other people, the shortcomings of other people, but whether we are fulfilling the calling and the purpose of God for us. A road to a healthy self-competition starts with setting ambitious and exciting goals. You need to have a goal, you need to have a purpose. And your goal must be tangible. It must be so exciting that when you wake up in the morning, it's the source of your joy as you pursue the realization of that goal. Jesus Christ gave us a healthy example of what, how one can set ambitious and exciting goal. And so very early in his ministry, he defined why he was on earth. I came to seek and to save that which was lost. And everything he did was defined by that goal. His sleeping and waking thought was how to fulfill that goal. And so Jesus Christ will tell you, I go about my father's business. Because the goal was so ambitious, so exciting, and his daily pursuit was a realization of this goal. Then we need to define our values. There are people who feel the end justifies the means. If I know my purpose, it doesn't matter how I achieve it, as long as that goal has been achieved. But as believers, we must ensure that our goals are consistent with our values. This is what we call self-authorship. And that is why others may do certain things in the achievement of their goals, but you cannot, because your goals are also defined by your values. And I want to also tell you another thing about healthy self-competition. Embrace a growth mindset. You need to come to a point where you know that any success you have achieved is still the starting point. And uh, Paul will tell you that he presses on towards the mark. This tells you about a person that had a growth mindset. It says, I forget those things that be behind, and I pursue that which is ahead of me. And brothers and sisters, you need to come to that point where you embrace a growth mindset. 
that you never feel satisfied with any level of achievement as long as it falls below the plan, the purpose of God for your life. What do we mean by a growth mindset? We should be able to distinguish between a growth mindset from a fixed mindset. What do we mean by a fixed mindset? As experts in online education, Purdue University Global gives you all the flexibility you need to balance school, work, and life. Take classes 100% online to fit your schedule, your pace, and your personal budget. Learn how to save on tuition and time online at Purdue Global. Teachers, let's face it, it's not always easy to keep our students focused. You want to know my secret weapon? Education.com. You log on and you can find games that reinforce any topic you're teaching in class. Education.com also offers over 20,000 printable worksheets and a worksheet generator, which I use to make crosswords, word searches, and other puzzles for my students. Distractions in the classroom are inevitable, but with Education.com, I have tools to keep my students engaged and help them love learning. Try it yourself at Education.com. Brothers and sisters, a fixed mindset is the belief that intelligence, talent, fixed traits, um, and they are fixed traits and they cannot be developed. It is a belief that talent alone creates success without effort. But this is very important for us to understand that in this world we have very poor miserable and yet talented intelligent people because talent alone intelligence alone will not be able to help you become successful if the talents are not backed with efforts that will ensure the translation of your goals to reality and so we are being now encouraged to embrace a growth mindset, which is a belief that intelligence and talent can be developed through learning and resilience. And this is very important. That, and the, the, the Japanese have a word for it called kaisen. And kaisen simply means continuous improvement. The Japanese have built a branch where they define their own quality standards. They don't compete with any country when it comes to quality. Because if they want to compete with any country, they are going to perform less than the standard they have set for themselves. So they are their own standards when it comes to quality. And if you see a brand like Toyota, this is the concept that defines what they do. And I want to take you to a journey that will end with you becoming your own standard when it comes to competition. And this is a build up on the growth mindset. I want to share with you six winner principles. If you want to win in any area of life, what are the principles that you can follow that will ensure that you win in any situation that you find yourself in? These winner principles have been set for us through the word of God. And we're going to look at that very briefly. The winner principle. And I want to discuss this using the various letters that spells winner. Number one, the first letter is W. Work with a purpose. Work with a purpose. 
Now, purpose is a key driver in everything that we do. You work with a purpose. The question you must ask yourself is, have I got a purpose? Is that something that I am pursuing? Is that a drive behind whatever I do? And this is so important because without purpose, you won't be able to fulfill any goal and any ambition you have. In Philippians, Paul says, but this one thing I do. This was a person whose purpose was so clearly defined. He wasn't talking about 40 other things that I do. This one thing I do. He worked with a purpose. And he tells you that the starting point of everything he does is defined by this. Work with a purpose. The very first recorded words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when he was just 12 years, he says, I must be about my father's business. And that was his purpose. In Proverbs chapter 12, chapter 21, verse 5, the Bible says, The plans of the diligent leads to profit. You need to plan your work. You need to work your plan. Diligent people have a clear purpose and they are not easily distracted from their goals. The second letter is I. Insist on integrity. I told you there are people whose dream and desire is to achieve a goal at all costs. And we now find ourselves in an age where people can do anything, cheat in an exam, bribe their way through to get a job, and their desire is to achieve their success at all costs and by all means. I want to challenge you as young men and women who want to achieve sustainable success in life, that regardless of what you do, Insist on integrity. Nothing, brothers and sisters, lasts without integrity. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9, it says, He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverted his ways shall be known. God is interested in your integrity. Don't look for shortcuts to success, you have to count the full cost and pay the full price. If someone you love is struggling with their mental health, they don't have to struggle alone. Text or call 988 to get resources and support from trained crisis counselors. Hope has a new number. Text or call 988. Number three, N. Never make excuses. If you read the book of Proverbs, you will, you will see a lot about laziness. In the book of Proverbs, uh, the wise man defines a lazy man to be a sluggard. And he says that a sluggard is always accusing, blaming everybody else for their failures. They are accusing and then excusing. The slothful man, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 13, a slothful man saith, There is a lion without, I shall be slain in the streets. There are people who give various reasons why they have to fail. They have reasons to justify their underperformance. And it's also very surprising, and I wonder how some people can be so creative and they can really get to the height of creativity when they want to justify their failure. 
A slothful man said, There is a lion without, I shall be slain in the streets. Freddie, can you just imagine that in the streets of Jerusalem, that you will find lions that are now a threat to the life of a lazy man? There will always be opportunity for people to justify their failures and underperformance. We call that rationalization. And the word rationalization comes from two words, rational and then lies. So we are talking about lies that sounds very rational to the lazy man. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23, it says, Work in all labor there is profit, but the talk of the leaves tended only to penury. We have people who know how to talk a lot about success, about their dreams, but they will never back it up with any action to achieve them. You have somebody who writes a white thing and will not pass well. And we'll talk about how I dream to go to the university and become a nurse, a medical doctor, a, a lawyer, an engineer, but will never put in the effort required to reseat that exam so he can pursue the fulfillment of that dream. Talk is cheap. Talk brings poverty. And that is the cause of procrastination. The price is always enormous. And I pray that by the grace of God, through this Impact Academy, we are going to put aside all excuses. Those excuses may be justified, but I tell you, no matter how reasonable the excuses may be, they will never be accepted as a reason for the failure of a child of God. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 3, it says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. And that is a very fascinating story. Daniel was a prisoner of war who was taken to a foreign country, and within a matter of months, he was rocketing to at the very top. You just can't keep a child of God down. Success is in your DNA. You can't fail. You are chosen to succeed. And if you can play your human indispensable role, I tell you, you will blossom wherever you are planted. In a foreign hostile country, Daniel rises to the place of prominence where he's now second in command over the whole nation. Why? Because he was a person of excellence. And I want to challenge you. You may say, well, but I grew up in a poor family. I've lost my parents, and the things are very difficult. Life is tough. That is not a reason for your failure. In the midst of all the challenges you face, you can still rise to the very top. And the Bible is littered with examples of men and women who face challenges, difficult circumstances, and yet they rose up to become all that God wanted them to be. We can talk about Joseph, for example, who was sold into Egypt, ended up in Potiphar's house, was tempted, ended up in prison, but a good man can never be kept in the pit can never be kept in Potiphar's house forever, can never be kept in prison forever. He left the prison and he was now on the throne. I pray that that will be your story. I said I pray that will be your story. Number four, the letter N, never stop learning. You must get to the point where you're always growing and developing. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 14, it says that the heart of him that had understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouths of fools feeded on foolishness. We need to grow, we need to develop, and one of the things that we need to do is to keep learning. 
And we need to take inspiration from our Father in the Lord. Always fresh, with new knowledge, exposed, and by the grace of God, always abreast with the issues that affect the lives of people. And that is the kind of attitude you need to have where you keep learning, you keep developing, you keep expanding. This is my comeback. Start yours at purdueglobal.edu. And um, by the grace of God, we will get to the very top. We are told that whatever you learn in six to 12 months, it's now obsolete. And that is why you still have to work on getting new knowledge, especially in the field in which you have found yourself. What are the approaches for achieving, I mean, improvement through learning? Get advanced degrees or qualification. Further your education to the highest level possible. If you feel like getting the first degree after your WASI, go in for it. If you want to continue to your master's, to do your PhD, because that is your dream, so you can fulfill your career ambition, pursue it. And those of us in the areas of, you know, professional development, get certified in your area. So you may have a first degree in accounting, but you may say, well, for me to perform and rise in the field of accounting, I need to get certified. So you write the professional examination. You join a professional organization so that you become a member and take advantage of the career development opportunities. There was an article on how to reduce the risk of getting laid off. And the article said that people who don't get in a laid off, they have three characteristics. They are flexible, meaning that they are ready to learn new things they are ready to change career or field if necessary. They are very versatile and they are always improving. And this is very important. I mean, I studied engineering for my first degree. I did um, civil engineering. And uh, after working for a while, I just realized that I feel more inclined, my interest, my ambition and the impact I wanted to have will not be in the field of engineering. And so for my master's degree, I diverted. I went into infrastructure planning where I could support how my engineering work can now be implemented and to make a difference. For my PhD, I realized I needed to go into policy making because after you have designed and you have planned, if you cannot influence policy at the country level, regional level, you won't be able to see the impact of your work. And so you need to get to the point where you are very flexible, you are versatile, and you keep improving. Number five, economize your time. Winners know the value of time and they know how not to waste it. They have mastered time management. They don't waste their energy. They don't waste their efforts. There are so many time wasters. Things that fill our lives, but that make no contribution towards the realization of our goals and visions in life. All excellent people, people who excel, they know how to manage their time. It Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 6, it says, Because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the mystery of man is great upon him. The point here is this. Don't waste your time. And it's so pathetic how social media and the impact of social media has been so tremendous on the lives of young people. Young people no longer read, no longer desire to pursue I mean, dreams 
that can impact their lives and their generations because of the diversion and the time-wasting engineered through social media. There are some of us here who need deliverance. We need deliverance from the abuse of internet and the distraction that it poses to our education and our career ambitions. And I pray by the grace of God, we are going to rediscover ourselves back onto the path of greatness through economizing our time. How do you really manage your time? I mean, we are taught that there is a way you can manage all activities that come your way to find out whether they are worth your time or not. Anytime you are faced with any activity to perform, ask yourself two questions. Number one, is this thing important? Does it lead to the achievement of my goals? Does it, does it fit into my value system? That is about the importance. And then the second question is, is it urgent? Is it the thing I should be doing at this time? Is that the right thing to be done at this right time? And so you have this quadrant. On your top right, you will have things that are important and they are urgent. That is where you should focus your energy. Then you may have things that may be important, but they may not be urgent. These are things you can conveniently postpone. So what we are saying is that push your time, your energy, into things that are important because they are aligned with your values, they are aligned with your goals, and they are aligned with your purpose in life. And finally, I want to talk about our resolve to stick with it to the very end. I'm talking about the staying power. There are people who give up so quickly they give up on their dreams very easily. They don't have the stamina and the endurance. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, it says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Winners simply don't know how to quit. You cannot quit. You can't stop school. You can't sit down. You can't give up. No matter what you are going through, the challenges that you face, giving up is not an option. You can't quit. What will you tell your own children? That a time came after the BCE results, you just gave up. After the WASI results, you just give up. You can't stop. And I've realized that the, those who have achieved tangible success, sustainable success in life, were people who persevered and people who endured. By the grace of God, we are going to pursue to the very end. Now, the fact is this. Successful people... They are probably those who make so many mistakes, they stumble, they fail as many times as losers. But they just don't let it get them down. They don't give up. They learn from their failures, so they become better and better. They don't live a perfect life. And if you are here and you feel like giving up on your education, even on your Christian life, I want to tell you that you are not alone. There are many people who found themselves in similar situation in which you find yourself, but they were able to encourage themselves. In Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16, it says, For do a righteous man four, seven times, he rises again. And... Uh, 
the quote from a famous theologian, Scarlett O'Hara. He says, tomorrow is another day. So you may face challenges, you may face disappointments, you may have setbacks, but you are not the type that will give up so easily. I mean, growing up, I found myself also in a situation like that where at a point I felt like, is it worth pursuing any dream? Maybe I should just give up. And I was just around, you know, 14, 15 years in a very tough uh, environment growing up. And I remember that sometimes I would just get out of my bed, you know, 14, 15 years, and I would just go out of my house, go look for a quiet place and sit down. And then the thought would be running through me, why don't you just give up of becoming somebody, or becoming, you know, or pursuing any dream? And then I'll hear another voice asking me, so if you give up, what would be the impact on your parents? What would be the impact on your siblings? What would be the impact on the people in your neighborhood? What would be the impact even on your country? And then I would put myself together again and tell myself I'm not going to give up. By the grace of God, you will not give up. I said you will not, you will not, don't be discouraged. You can choose to trust God, to depend upon him. You can choose to think on the promises of God. He says, I know the thought I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You can choose to think about what he says rather than what people say or what circumstances you find yourself in. I know you are a winner. I know you are chosen to succeed. I know inside your DNA is success personified. And by the grace of God, we are all rising up, upward, to higher ground. We are going to be everything that God has created us to be. You are chosen to succeed. And as we work with a purpose, as we insist on integrity, as we never stop learning and never making excuses, economizing our time, resolving never to give up, I know we will get to the very top. GoDaddy is a partner that always puts you first. Start today at GoDaddy.com. I know we will get to the very top. And success will be our birthright in Jesus' name. As, you know, as uh, young people in this country and in other countries all over the world, I have a vision that in the next 10 15 years, all of us sitting in this place, we are going to be manning the most strategic institutions in our country, in West Africa, in Africa, and in global institutions all over the world. And it will come to pass in Jesus' name. How many of us are ready for greatness? Can I see by hand? You are ready for greatness. We want to be on our feet as we talk to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank and bless you for all that you have done. We thank you for this moment and for the great things you are teaching us through your servants. We pray for grace. We pray for wisdom. We pray for strength to apply everything to our lives. And we know that your grace will lift us to higher heights in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
this cannot be an amen for the kind of blessing God has given you. I said, Amen. You can shout an amen that will shake the whole stadium. I said, Amen. God bless you. Have your seats. God bless you. So, um, we want to move into uh, general question and answer time. Um, if you have any questions and you are in the stand, I would encourage you to move to the very front. Um, our technical men uh, are there with the microphones to help you so that you ask your questions. Now, while they get there and you also get yourself set, I want you to note this. Excellentia in one minute. He said, we can all succeed and our success should not be defined by the failure of others. Your competition should be you versus you. He also said, set new standards for yourself every day. Our reference should be the Lord Jesus and his expectation for our lives. Note this too, set ambitions and exciting goals that are tangible and achievable. Embrace the growth mindset. Talents must be developed and backed by efforts that will promote growth. The win attitude, work with a purpose, insist on integrity, and never make excuses. The Lord will take us there in Jesus' name. So to join Professor Charles Amwate here, we have a strong panel that I will be introducing to you in a jiffy that will take all your questions and answer them in a manner that will equip you with more to be able to achieve greater things in your life. In no particular order, I introduce to you one of our senior lecturers at the University of Cape Coast in Ghana, Pastor Dr. Insian. He is Pastor Dr. Francis Insian. He is a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Coast, Department of Chemistry. He had his MSc and PhD in Ghana and Canada, respectively. He is currently the National Honorary Secretary to the Ghana Chemical Society. If I want to read everything about him, I will tire you and we will not have time to listen to the wisdom they have for us. So then, with a resounding applause, I want you to give it up for Pastor Dr. Francis Isian. Pastor, you're welcome. In addition to him and Pastor Chasamwati, we also have engineer Dr. Samson Kofi Che, who is also a senior lecturer at the Department of Chemical Engineering, Kumasi Technical University in Ghana. He had his PhD at the World Bank Center for Oil Fields, Chemicals Research, University of Port Harcourt, Nigeria. And he had his master's from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and his first degree from the University of Cape Coast. He is the regional youth coordinator for the Deeper Life Bible Church, Kumase. I think you can do it better for him as we welcome engineer Dr. Samson Kofiche. Pastor, you are welcome. Last but not least, I introduce to you 
Dr. Abigail Ampoma Adaku, who is a senior lecturer at the Department of